Hello fellow Minecrafters, Gearsaw Studios here. Today I'm going to show off Minecraft 22W12A, where they have re-added the warden and, well, he's even scarier. However, before I begin, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. So, with that, let's investigate. So, here we are with the change logs, and it took quite a few features just from the deep dark snapshot. However, they've added boats with chests from Bedrock Edition, which is absolutely revolutionary. So, darkness effect, which darkens your screen. It's kind of like blindness, but a little bit worse. They've made the Skulk Shriekers actually do stuff. I'm not going to cover that one too much because it's literally exactly the same. They added the Warden into this, and the Warden has a couple new things with it, so We'll investigate that. The swift sneak enchantment has been added, and it's now part of leggings. And of course, the boat with chest, which is completely new and going to be the main thing we focus on. So, here's the change logs, and it's not too interesting besides deep dark stuff. However, there are some new things with the warden that will look in game. So, they renamed the accessibility slider from darkness effect to darkness pulsing. And the boat with chest. You can sacrifice one of the seats for a chest. And it's exactly how a chest works, which means hoppers will work on it. And you can also break it, which is very cool because you can just pack your boat and settle somewhere new. So the big changes, leaves are now waterloggable which is going to be amazing for builders. The deep dark is less flooded, so less issues with that. And unfortunately for speedrunners and not too much for other people, they removed the debug hotkey cycling render distance, along with a lot of things relating to mud bricks and mangrove stuff, just having inconsistent things. So overall, it's quite a big snapshot. So let's investigate in-game. So. First, we're going to be covering the deep dark. So, it's just very cool looking, but it's exactly the same. So, besides the lack of water, there's still water, but there's less aquifers, so that's a good thing. But, Skulk Shriekers now have their functionality, which, if you want to learn more about them, check out my deep dark snapshot 1 video. But, basically, they summon the warden. If you step on them or give them a vibration, they're going to make a noise. So you see, stuff is emitting from them, and now suddenly the darkness effect, which still takes some time to load in. And if you activate it too many times, you can summon a warden. It's three times, and it has to be within 30 minutes. You heard that noise? That's the warden coming closer. So one last time, and the warden will erupt from the ground. So. We can see, very scary, warden. So I'm going into creative mode for my own safety. But the important thing is that the warden now can reach you from farther. So if I give myself some snowballs. So snowballs, giving myself nine snowballs, make him angry by throwing one at him. And it seems like he aggroes slightly easier. So that's not good. But something important, he has a bigger attack range. So, just like that, got thrown off my tower and died. So, don't think you can do that anymore, because he can now hit you from a lot farther than it seems. Now, it's time to see exactly how long this reach is. So, going into survival mode, and giving a vibration. So, this is about 7 blocks tall. So, throw a snowball to make him mad. And, the unique feature, his animation still plays when you're paused. So he kind of just stands there awkwardly for a moment. So he can't hit you from 7. He can't hit you from 6. Now down to 5. And you still can't hit him, but down to 4. Just like that, I've been thrown off and been killed. So you have to tower at least 5 blocks to escape from this guy now. Which means you can no longer cheese him without a bow. So towering up doesn't work anymore. So, what else can you do? Well, used to be able to do. So, you can see the warden's heading over. And, let's try giving him lava. And you can see, 
he just bounces right off it. So you can no longer do that either. And you can't slow him down either because of course he's bouncing right off it. So he can't move very well on top of the lava, but he can still definitely get out of it. So with this new swimming ability, well, you're still in danger. So yeah, the fire aspect is no longer useful against him. So longer attack range and the ability to literally just not to get hurt by fire. What's more about this dude? Well, if you ever wanted to, you know, have a pet warden because that's probably something you were mad about because he'd burrow away, well, there's something new. So if you just give him a name, as in just telling him he can't burrow anymore, he can no longer burrow. So he can stay on this podium forever. So we're going to check back with this guy in a little while and he's still going to be here because he's named. So he can no longer burrow. So, this guy has been left isolated for quite a while, and there's another warden over there, just for testing purposes about his increased range, and this guy still has not despawned. So, yeah, it's a way you can keep a warden now. Although, I'd still be slightly careful, because he might get new anti-cheese features. So, about your ideas of how to avoid the cheese, in mechanics so that way you can still attack him and he can't attack back well share your ideas in the comments because i'd like to see what they are and if they'll survive to the full release because lava and towering up are out of the question so about swift sneak so it's just an enchantment that was added in the last experimental snapshot and it's exactly what you think it is it allows you to sneak faster However, what it did in that snapshot is it was put on boots and made you sneak faster. However, trying enchanting it now will give you the error message, netherite boots cannot support that. So, instead, you put it on your leggings, which means our first true leggings enchantment. Now, we can add a ton of other enchantments such as soul speed and depth strider to give yourself the maximum mobility. Now with this, put it on, and we're not on any unique surface, so you can see I'm sneaking faster, which is 75%, not 100% of the speed you move while walking. So, for those of you who crouch bridge, this is an amazing thing, because now you can say, haha, I can almost speed bridge, because you can go very fast like this, and if you have a good CPS, you can go very fast. Now you should be able to have a lot of mobility considering you sneak fast, you move in water fast, and you run on soul soil fast. Now it's just a perfect trifecta, no more mutualism. But one of the features that are the most anticipated in this is chest boat. It's called boat with chest and of course the wood type is put before that so we can have mangrove boat with chest. Now, what you can do is, you can sail around in it, however, as you can see, it only supports one passenger. It moves exactly the same, pretty much, so no unique mechanics to it, besides the fact that you can use its chest, which means you could just sail around in the sea and now you have an entire inventory, which means you basically have a pre-ender dragon shulker box, which is incredibly useful. There isn't too much to them, besides the fact that they work with hoppers. So, I get some hoppers, and place four of them, place this on top, and if I put a bunch of hoppers in here, you can see they're getting siphoned out very quick, at a rate of four, which means you can put items in here very quick, and you can take them out very quick, which means sorting systems will definitely have some new technology to work with. Considering this will be able to take input from way too many sides, two on each side and four on top, which means you could have a grand total of 12 hoppers going into this, which means you're going to have a very fast way to combine items into one area, because chest can only absorb five. The final unique mechanic with the chest boat besides, you know, being a boat with a chest, 
and breaking it causes it to lose all of its items, mm -hmm. is the fact that piglins get mad. So, put myself into survival, and opening this will make them mad. However, I wasn't wearing gold, so this isn't the best example. So, if I dismount, get some gold, and I equip it, and go back in, they aren't going to be mad naturally. However, if I press E, now I have angry piglins. So, don't think you can use this as an effective way to raid Bastion, because they're still going to get mad when you open it. For our final big feature, we have waterlogged leaves. What you can do, you can place them under water, or you can use a water bucket on them. And you can see, the water visually occupies it. And this applies for all leaves. Jungle, birch, spruce, acacia, azalea, mangrove, which by the way is now affected by biome tin, which means it's better than just in swamp or badlands builds. Now, by placing all these in here, you can see all of them are able to be waterlogged, which means any undersea build will be heavily boosted by this because now you can fill it up with water. This especially applies to azalea leaves, which match pretty well with kelp. There was one change I missed in the last snapshot that I just want to show off now. Mud is renewable. Just by getting a dirt block and using a water bottle on it, you get mud. Just a very simple way to make it renewable, and I forgot it in the last snapshot. Along with that, the warden is no longer undead, which means you can no longer deal insane amounts of damage with smite, but also something way more important is the wither works on it. Which means if we can summon the wither, you can see the warden is now angry at the wither. However, the warden has no way to reach the wither. But, in an enclosed area, this is a very good way to kill a wither. Also, wardens can swim now, which means one less thing on the cheesing list. And about that wither thing, well, it's still not going to work all the way up here. However, I did have to eliminate those wardens and wither. But, you can see how much damage one hit dealt. So, if we just go to a more secluded area, where both can actually hit each other, you're going to have an amazing battle, especially if you give the Warden strength, because it will deal a lot of damage. Which means, in here, besides outside where the Warden's absolutely losing, if we summon a Wither in here, and then summon a Warden, then we're going to have a very easy encounter with the Warden. Just like that, the Wither is already getting denied, which means this is a very easy way to kill the Wither. The only difficult part is, well, getting that nether star, considering the warden will already be in near full anger mode. So, with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. So, with that, take care. Be careful around the warden. He's getting smarter every snapshot. Gearsaw, out.